What's up? This is T Briz from Briz Beats and T Briz Rock Instrumentals. Today we're gonna be making a grimy boom bap beat, Buffalo style boom bap, like something you might hear Griselda rap over. In fact, I took direct influence from their track Cruiserweight Coke off the album What Would Sheen Do? We tried to get our drums to sound like that, we tried to use all the instruments that they used on that track, and you'll see the track that we make today is somewhat of a knockoff of that track just to get an idea of the techniques that were used to make a track like that. Also, we're gonna be making this track without samples. We're gonna use V. VST and MIDI only. So first, let me play you a sample of the final beat that we're going to make today, and then I'm going to show you how I made it. Alright, let's take a listen. Okay, if you know the track Cruiserweight Coke, you can probably feel the influence from that on the one we just played. You know, every now and then I like to mess around by trying to emulate someone else's beat. I think of it like this. If you want to learn how to play guitar, one way to get better is to learn how to play someone else's songs or some popular songs that you like, like covering songs by other bands. The same thing can apply to music production. We're not making it to sell it or profit from it. We're making it as an exercise to learn something. Also, I will not be playing the track Cruiserweight Coke during this tutorial for fears of copyright strikes from YouTube. So if you want to hear the track we're modeling this one after as a reference, pull that song up and take a listen at some point. And I'd say especially if you don't know who Griselda is, they are my favorite modern gangster rap hip hop music on the planet right now. So go check them out if you don't know about them. All right, let's get into FL Studio. First, the tempo, 65 BPM. You could double it and make it 130 if you want. Basically just found the general tempo of the beat that we're modeling after, and that's where I got this number from. Okay, we'll move into the drums. Uh, listening to the overall drum sounds on our reference track. Okay, our target is to pick drum sounds that sound similar to real drum kit sounds, but still sound hip-hop chopped. They also don't actually slap that hard, if you listen to the track that we're modeling after. They're a bit more laid back, but they still got some punch to them. And also, for this type of track, we're going to do some things to humanize these a bit as well. Alright, the kick drum. For the kick drum, I went through my sound library and I found a kick drum in Wu Kits, which is RZA and Wu Tang Sound Kits. You can see over here, here's the name, here's the sound file itself. Let's take a look at the pattern. Let's listen to this pattern and see what it sounds like and then we will talk about it. Okay, so there's multiple things going on here to humanize these kicks. First of all, it's tuning. You might find a kick similar to your reference track, but it's just not pitched right. So you can see normally a kick would be placed on C5, or depending where it's tuned, it would be placed on whatever key it's tuned to. But by placing these up and down here on the piano scale to the left, I listened for a tuning that matched the reference track. So that's why this is where it is right here. Okay, note placement. Moving the notes a bit off that perfect timing is a good thing since human beings don't actually hit perfect notes in exact time when they play. Let me show you what I mean. I'll zoom all the way in on this first note right here. This is the very first kick that hits. And if you notice, there's a small gap right here before it hits. If you were to place this and it would be automatically quantized and it would usually be placed right up against the left side of the window like this. But I hold down Alt and then I drag it out just a little bit. Too off the marker may sound sloppy. If you're all the way over here, it's going to sound way out of time. But if you do it just right, you get a little bit of a swing that's more humanistic. And you'll see if you just look closely, this note's a little off, this note's a little off, that note is a little off in the other direction. Every single one of these notes I moved just a smidgen, and then I played it back each time to make sure that it didn't sound too off, but it gave it just a little bit of an organic feel. Right, the next thing we did to humanize these is the note velocity. Specifically, in this area here. When you do a kick like that, the quick doo -doo, that hit like this right here, that doo -doo, doo -doo. the one that comes first is normally a little bit lower in velocity than the one that comes next. When a drummer is playing, the foot just happens to kind of tap the pedal on the first one and then really slam down on the second one. I would also, it sounds good to do it that way. So anytime I have two kicks coming up, almost like a double kick, doo -doo, doo -doo, the first one, the do before the do is always lower. 
And I suggest that you incorporate that into your workflow as well. And you'll notice I have it here. We have it here where these two are hit right in a row, a little quieter than louder. And we have it here, same thing. And then some of the velocities on the other kicks are just tweaked a little bit as well to give it some more humanistic feel. All right, the next trick for humanizing is the envelope. Let me show you the envelope settings. This is how I have it set up. Attacks all the way down, delays all the way down. Hold, I have the knob set to right here. I mean, I could make this longer. I could make this shorter. This one I tend to play with, and you could too. Everything that's down is what really matters for this envelope trick that we're going to do. Let's go back into the piano roll because that's where this envelope makes a difference. If you notice, this note's a little bit longer than this note, and this note's shorter, and this note's a little bit longer. They're all a little bit different from each last note, and that's because the way I have the envelope set up is, watch, if I pull this all the way out, this will play the entire sound file of the kick that we have hooked up to this. Watch, listen. You can hear everything. The kick starts. It kind of fades out a little bit towards the end until it's really quiet. But if I were to take this and make it really short, just to over-exaggerate, it's going to cut the sound off early. So listen. You see that? It cuts it off really early. So you don't want to go too crazy with this, but... Think about a drummer hitting a kick pedal when he plays the drums. He could pull off early. He could leave the kick pedal all the way down after a hit. He could softly touch the kick pedal against the kick drum skin to mute a note after he just played one, etc. These, All these things are either a drummer's style or even little imperfections. And whether intentional or not, they make things more human. So in here, we made these all a little bit different and a little bit imperfect. So they don't play the full sample to get a humanistic feel. All right, that's it for the kick drum. Let's move on to the snare next. I found another sound in the Woo Kits library that I was showing for the kicks. It was very similar to the snare on Cruiserweight Coke. Let me find it in the browser and show you the exact sound we used. It's down here, and this is in the Lunch 77 RZA drum kit. Here's what it sounds like before we do anything to it. One of the qualities I was looking for, because based on the reference track, I was looking for a snare sound that sounds a little bit dead and dry. Here's the pattern, it's very simple. The snare is just playing on the two and the four. Velocities are all the same. And we did a tiny bit of that note swing like we did on the kick drum as well for a humanistic feel. Let's go ahead and listen. Okay, some other things that were done to the snare. I changed our pitch a little bit to get it to sound a little bit more like our reference track. And I also EQ'd it, but your EQ might look different if you're trying to go for a dead sound and you're trying to pull some things out, but this is what I did to this one. There's another little effect that's on here as well. It's a, a slap delay, a very short slap delay that doubles up the snare sound, but very, very subtly that you barely even hear it. This is H delay stereo by Waves Audio, by the way. And honestly, it's so subtle that I just played it on and off to see if it was worth playing for you guys. But it's really so subtle, you can barely even hear it, even with the headphones on. So probably not worth it. But I just figured I'd point that out as well. All right, let's move on to the hi-hats. Here's the sound. Stuck with the Woo kits as well. Here, I'll find it. It's over here. Woo underscore 1P 218. Let's listen to the sound. It sounds good. It sounds dirty. And it sounds realistic-ish. Let's look at the pattern. Very simple. I humanized these a bit too by shifting them a little bit off. It's hard to tell here, but we did. The velocities are randomized on this one. You can do this with intention and purposely make velocity where you want it. Say you wanted the first one of the bar to be the loudest and then the next three to be the quietest. You can do that. Or if you wanted back and forth, this to be loud, this to be quiet, this to be loud, this to be quieter. You could do it like that. In this case, I went with a straight randomization. And I'll show you how I did it. Up here, if you click this and you go to tools, there's a randomize menu item. Click it. This velocity knob here, when I tweak this, watch, you'll see the velocities just shifting around a little bit down there. You see that? They're moving around. And it's randomizing it for me. You want to just tweak this till it looks good to you down here. I'd suggest that, you know, not anything too crazy. Like, this might be a little bit extreme. You have some really quiet ones, some really loud ones, but maybe you want that. But for me, I'm going to just kind of get it right about... Eh, right about here looks good. That looks good. It's not too crazy and not too extreme. Also, uh, just to mention, look at all the other stuff inside this randomizer tool. You can randomize the pan, the release, the pitch. There's some other cool stuff to play around with in here. So get into that and play with it and see what you come up with. 
Let's unmute these hi-hats and play them so we can listen to everything we got so far. And we got a second hi-hat on here. Here, I'll show it to you really quick. Let's uh, pull up the file so you can see it. Wu underscore one P220. It's in the Wu-Tang drum kit folder. I don't think there's a second hi-hat on the original track, on the reference track that we're using. But I like doing this and adding another hi-hat layer. Here's the notes. It's just one hit on every single beat. It's subtle, but let's listen. Nothing groundbreaking. All right, next we got an open hi-hat. And I want to point something out about Cruiserweight Coke. They got some really cool stuff going on, like a drum fill part that plays every few bars. I love that drum fill. And I didn't want to go too crazy and emulate every last thing for this video. So I didn't do the drum fill. But we did a little something with the open eye hat to make the drums a little bit more interesting and have some kind of atmosphere to them. Here's the open eye hat sound. They can hear the effects that I have on there to try to make it a little bit more interesting because the drums are very dry on this track. So let's look at the notes. We tuned it and brought it lower to make it sound a little bit darker and deeper, like the vibe on our reference track. The original sound itself, I'll play it for you. It kind of cuts through a little bit. It's really crispy is the word I would describe it with. So one thing we did for that on the hi-hat was right on the hi-hat insert itself, add some reverb. Turn the mix knob down to about 45 we have on here. You see where all the settings are at. And that's just to take away some of the crispiness. So now our sound sounds like this. Here's what it sounds without the effects. And it's not tuned down. And then here, what it sounds like with tuned down with that little reverb. It's got vibe now, right? Let's listen to every single drum part we've gone through so far. This is the drum loop for the song. So let's look at the instruments that really bring that vibe come to life. We'll start with the bass first. So we did some drums that sound like live drums, and I'll say even the bass on Cruiserweight Coke sounded like an electric bass just a little bit to me. So that's what I went with. I went with this bass, this contact plugin, the Scarby Rickenbacker bass. Here's the settings if you're interested in looking at those. For the notes, I just listened to Cruiserweight and figured out the four notes that were being played on the bass. And then I rearranged them a bit so they weren't exactly the same, just a similar vibe and in the same scale. I think the scale is what was really important on that track. That scale has a dark, evilish, spooky underground vibe to it. Let's listen. We'll look at the mix on the bass fader. I use this a lot. We're running the bass through bias effects too. It's the amp simulation plugin. It simulates an amp head and a cabinet and a bass being mic'd up and all sorts of things. We got reverb and EQ pedals. Here's the settings if you're interested. I don't want to dive too deep on this, but mess around with bias effects, especially if you're using bass and guitar type instruments. Hell, you can run anything through this. It doesn't even have to be bass and guitar. Then in the effects chain, after bias effects, we ran it through fruity fast distortion to make it rumble a bit more with that added saturation. Low end plus saturation, sounds good. That's it for the bass, let's move on to the organ. So on Cruiserweight, they have this organ sound. It's like one chord being played with this modulating vibrato on top of it. It's really dope and dark and underground sounding. We're gonna try and do something close to that just to get the vibe going in that direction. First, I'll show you the plugin, Vintage Organs. House Cat, I may have played around with these manual, uh, I don't even know what these are called, sliders? Let me know down in the comment section if you know what these are called. It says upper manual, lower manual. I messed around with some of these, so go ahead and take a look at those settings. Close that out, we'll look at the note. There's, like I said, it's just a one chord that plays with an effect on top of it. Here's the chord. We're gonna listen to it with the effects and everything turned on first so we can hear that. Here, here we go. You hear what's going on there with the organ? You know what? Let's mute everything except for the organ so we really just hear the organ.
Sounds pretty good, right? I think that's a cool sound. It's like a sound effect just by playing one chord, but here's the interesting thing. Let's turn off all the effects and listen to what it sounds like without it. So we'll mute this, which is the vibrato that we automate, we're gonna automate, and we'll turn off the Fruity Love filter. Now let's listen to it without all the effects on it. <laughs> That's it. That's what's playing underneath everything here. Let's listen to it with all the drums and everything real real fast So that's the starting point it kind of sounds awful I wouldn't leave it like that All right So one of the first things I did to tone that organ down a little bit because it's really screaming at you is I messed around with fruity love filter I played around it here. I think just to tell me if I picked one of the presets I think I picked one of the presets. I don't remember which one it is. If you know just by looking at this, let me know down in the comments sections, but I can't remember. Um, and I didn't really tinker too much. Here's what it sounds like with the Fruity Love filter on now. It's way toned down. Let's turn the filter off. Oh yeah, it's screaming at us. So we toned it down a lot. And also this is doing some other stuff, not getting into it. I just know it sounds a little bit better and more like the vibe that we're going for. And then on top of that, we wanted to add that vibrato. So one way of doing that is out here in the playlist, you can automate some vibrato. We click our organ here in the channel rack and we come over here to this volume knob and we right click and we do create automation clip. It's gonna create an automation clip for us in the playlist. And you see it did it for me, contact number two, volume multiplier. Well, I renamed this to organ at some point, but it named it contact number two, volume multiplier. And you come out into your playlist and you'll see an automation clip has been added. Click on this little guy up here in the top left corner, that automation clip, go to articulator tools, let me do create sequence. You see how it already screwed my thing up a little bit? It's because the sequence has been reset by these settings that are in here. I guess we'll just remake this really quick. First thing I want to do is make my pattern go out a little bit further because it's only one bar long and I want it to be four bars long. So let's add, if we click up here like this, you see how it's getting longer while we drag it out? Boom, boom, boom. And I guess all the way to the end there. Yeah, why not? And now you can see, see the wave that we created in here? It's the wave that's happening out there. And I believe we have this on, what do we have it on, attack level? Let's just play it really quick. We'll hit accept and we'll play it. I think if visually you can see what's happening there, right? It's modulating the volume up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And then it also swoops as a whole all the way down and back up. And you can hear what it's doing there. I think I kind of like this one better than what was originally there. So I'm going to leave it. That's how we got the organ to sound like that the way it does. Now, there's one other thing we did. We added some delay. We took this organ here and routed it to the insert right next to it. Name this one organ delay. Let me unmute that. You see fruity delay three. We got the wet signal coming out, so it's just the delay only coming out. And we added some delay, and then we pan the delay all the way to the right ear, and the organ is panned a little bit to the left. This widens the organ sound, and it also just made it sound more ambient and a little bit more spooky. Here, let's see if you can hear. If you have headphones on, listen to your right headphone, and you'll hear the delay on that organ. It almost makes it sound like it's starting on your left and then pinging over to the right a little bit. It's cool. Okay, that's it for the organ. Now we're going to go on to the next instrument. We got a guitar. This sound isn't on Cruiserweight Coke. I was just kind of playing around and found something and left it on. So here's a plugin we used for that. Contact factory selection, jazz guitar. Here's the settings. Let's close it out. Here's the notes. Now this is just an atmospheric sound effect layer. So fancy chords and notes are not needed. It's just this one note will do. Let's take a listen to what it sounds like. All right, let's talk about how we got that sound. The guitar insert, running it through Bias Effects 2. Here's the settings on Bias Effects 2. This is American Dream. This is actually the default preset that loads when you open Bias Effects 2, or at least when I open mine. 
And like 10 to 15% of the time, I wind up using this one. It makes for a cool sound effect. So sometimes when I turn this on, I'm like, okay, that's it. It's good. Then after that, added some fruity chorus. Because the chorus effect is a good way to get a spooky sound. Here's the settings for that spooky chorus. And then for some even more atmosphere, some reverb on that guitar too as well. Similar strategy like we did for the organ. Just routing that guitar insert over to the insert next to it naming it guitar reverb notice that for the width the guitar is panned over to the right the reverbs panned over to the left on the reverb track we have a compressor i just did that to boost the gain coming into the reverb track because this guitar fader is down so ever so low we needed to make the volume coming into the reverb insert a little bit louder so we could actually hear it that's all the compressor is there for to boost the gain and then of course the reverb which is a hundred percent mixed because i wanted this fader this guitar reverb insert to just be 100% reverb, no dry signal. There's those settings. And then some EQ to take off a lot of the low and most of the low mids. Just thought it sounded good that way. That's it for this guitar, it's the sound effect guitar. All right, let's move on to the last instrument in this beat and it's the guitar melody. On Cruiserway Coke, they got a big, deep and dark sounding electric guitar complementing the bass riff. So we're going for the same type of thing. Here's the plugin. 70s funky telecaster vintage rhythm section here's the notes guitar melody we use the same notes as the bass notes just to thicken it up nothing fancy needed here this song is less about melody and more about dark vibes griminess atmosphere and this guitar brings something to that let's listen <laughs> Cool, let's look at the effects on that. Guitar melody, it has a fruity parametric EQ, filtering off some low end. Bias effects too, could you have guessed it? All the guitars and basses on this track have bias effects too, because we want them to sound more realistic, like they're being played through a real amplifier. Looks like the preset used was lost in space. That's it for bias effects. And after adding bias effects, another EQ. Oh, look at that, I really filtered off a lot. I guess I just wanted to hear something in the higher range. You know, it says a lot when you take all the effects off and you play it. Let's just turn all these off and see what the, the guitar sounded like before any of the effects were added. Wow. Let's start turning them on. Pull off some low end. Bias effects. Yep. So what I'm going to guess is that this EQ is added because that guitar is just way too cranking. It's probably muting everything else in the mix. Let's see. Yeah, the guitar is just killing the mix right now. It's like the only thing you hear. So what looks like happened is I actually dialed it back a ton. Let's turn this EQ on and see. Yeah. Now it's sitting like, to me, it's like way back in the mix as opposed to all the way up in the front in your face. We tucked it back a little bit, let the drums and the bass sit in front of it. Okay, cool. And then what else? Oh, uh, some reverb, probably also to make it less crispy. Let's see. Put it even further in the background. Sounds cool. All right, um, and then, this guitar also has its own dedicated reverb track. You see, same thing. Routed it to the insert next to it right here. We'll turn that one on. Uh, the guitar melodies pan to the left. The guitar melody reverb pan to the right, giving us that wideness. The only thing on the reverb track is a reverb plugin. Mixes up to 100% because the only thing we want is the reverb sound coming out of this insert. There's the settings. And that's it. That was the last insert on our list of uh, inserts down here in the mixer. So please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you got anything out of this video, especially if you made it this far to hear me say this. Also, please leave me a comment. I really appreciate getting feedback. It really helps my channel grow and helps me get exposed in the search results out there. So please help me out with that. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. I'm going to let this track play out at the end of the song just a little bit, maybe 10, 20 seconds of it if you want to stick around and listen if i get some comments down in the comment section about people wanting this track for whatever reason i will make it a free download but if 
there's no demand for it. I'm not going to waste my time putting it up. Guys, that's it. Thank you so much for sticking around. Peace out. Have a great day.